Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to apply this large gash wound on the leg. This is a Freak Me Around Double Dark exclusive prosthetic that we sculpted together and made together and you can buy the prosthetic and the mold on freakmo.com if you want to apply this at home. So we'll show you how to apply it to get nice edges, how to color match your skin tones, and how to realistically layer bloods to make it look more organic and fresh with some of these crusty bits down the bottom. So if you wanna learn how to do that, keep watching and uh, the links for the prosthetics and the mold are in the description box below. So this is the piece we're gonna be applying. This is the biggest piece of our collection. And we want it to be Ooh, it's kind of like that, right? So we've got the placement figured out on Leah's leg and now we're going to start putting the adhesive on it. So I'm going to be using Telesis 5 adhesive and thinner just because I have some left over from one of my classes and the stuff makes it really quick and easy to apply stuff. Definitely don't need it because it's very expensive. Prosade will also do the trick. Look at pretty much any of my videos before these prosthetic application videos, like the new ones, any of the old ones, or use Prosade if you want to know how to use that. So because we are using Telesis, I'm going to use a brush. I usually use a cotton tip if I'm applying with Prozade. So the thinner helps if you've got any gunk in your brush and just to help the adhesive spread out further. So this is quite a large piece. We're going to adhere the center first, just like an anchor point. So I'm going to take that off and just get a good amount of adhesive down the center. So, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Now let's put adhesive around the rest of this big boy. Hey. <laughs> Making sure my cat plastic is completely glued down, that we haven't got um, too many patches where it's unglued or wet glue underneath. Making sure the cat plastic's straight, not too crinkly, so that when we go to dissolve it, we're going to get nice edges. I'm going to get acetone around the edges now. I've got this little push-up thing. Oop! So you can just get my brush in there. First of all, I'm going to aim to get this flashing off by running my brush just along the edge. Pulling that back. And then just keep that going all the way around. Once we've got the flashing off, we're gonna focus on the edges. So I'm gonna try and keep it as close to the edge as possible so that I don't go in too far. And um, if you burn off enough cat plastic, it will reach us as you're fucking scratching it. <laughs> if you keep it far away enough from the silicon, you just blend out just the cat plastic if it goes too close to the silicon edge, you might end up burning off too much cat plastic and then you'll end up with a unblendable silicon edge. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit of this Prezi cream. Whoop, come on camera. I usually just get a little bit on a cotton tip. And then using a torn off sponge, we're going to put this in a very thin layer around the edges. It's just gonna to help to seal all the edges and give us a nice blended edge and keep the prosthetic down on the skin for longer. We're going to mattify the edges and we've put preset adhesive especially and where the cat plastic is with this matte sealer. It's going to take away the stickiness of the preset and it's going to mattify it so it looks more like skin. Um, I've got some in this little cup here if I want to focus and then we're going to put a little bit of alcohol about 50-50 alcohol to matte sealer. 50 for the preset, 50 for us. Yeah 50 for us. Do some shots. <laughs> Both Leah and I are very heavy drinkers <laughs> of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> now that Leah's done torturing me. <laughs> Alright, let's get into the fun part. We're going to match some skin tones. So for Leah, I like to use the Dark Flesh Tones palette. And for all of my skin tones, I like using a chip brush 
and spattering on colors over the top. It's really quick, really effective to give you a nice breakup of different colors, really translucent tones to make it look like skin. So seeing skin tones is difficult. Everybody's got different skin tones. This will only be applicable to Leah. Um, but the main thing I can suggest is just to do it in really translucent layers and build it up slowly, which is what alcohol paints are great for. So let's first of all, add in a little bit more yellow to Leah. So we're gonna add in this golden ochre color. So I usually put some alcohol in the cell, some alcohol in the lid, get some on the brush. You do need like a little bit of alcohol to make this spattering technique work, like enough alcohol in the brush to be able to spatter it out. So you can see about that translucency is what I'm gonna do. And then I'll start by building this up slowly around the edge of the wound. And just get more color and alcohol in the brush as I need it. Just that yellow oxide is just Leah's color. Let's <coughs> rename it Leah. Issue it seems with application is pretty much always just air bubbles at this point. Like they're the main things that come up in the email nemesis. But for this one, I have a feeling that it's not gonna really matter too much. Now we're gonna move on to the complexion palette, which I love for finishing up skin tones. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the cool tone blue first. And I wanna keep that very translucent. I'm also going to just clean my brush quickly before changing colors so the color in my spatter brush doesn't get too muddy. We're gonna go about a little bit more translucent than that. Probably about that level. And then if you've got a lot of yellow in the skin, sometimes it's nice to put a little bit of blue back in there to balance it out. So usually when sun hits areas like the kneecaps more, like if you're sitting down, if you have shorts on, we're gonna make those areas just a little bit darker on the prosthetic to help match the skin around it. I'm gonna try and keep it, it's still a little bit too dark. Try and keep it close to where the darker areas would be. And with the spatter brush, it will kind of graduate like or fade out that color to where it's lighter in the inner upper or inner middle thigh yeah. slightly darker lower down as well all right let's try doing a highlight color now i'm going to do that pastel yellow from the complexion palette i'm going to go on a pastel yellow now to make it quite watery to get big droplets of a highlight color. Maybe not that opaque though. Let's make it slightly more translucent. Maybe just one little tiny bit more dark tone around the knee. I'm gonna do some chocolate from the Dark Flesh Tones palette. I'm gonna mix in a tiny bit of the coral blue adjuster in the corner here to make it less orange. I just do one light flesh tone around the lighter parts from the dark flesh tones palette. Let's do some of the bamboo two color. Bigger like watery spattering. I just put some liquid powder shine illuminator, which is a cream based mattifier, just around the edge of our alcohol paint job where a little bit of shine is coming back through the cap plastic. I'm going to paint the center of the image. I'm going to use our reference image for a reference. So I'm going to start with the capillary palette. I'm going to use the DT, sorry, the dusty rose coloring in there. I'm going to put that over everything. Okay, I'm just making sure I haven't got too much of that on the skin around it, just because fresh cuts tend to just be like skin, and then like the detail is not usually a lot of stuff on the edge of the skin. It's just usually clean skin tone. And then gruesomeness. All right, let's do the next color. I'm gonna do dark mauve. This color here, we're gonna bring it into some of the deeper areas. 
off. We're going to go over the capillary tone now into the deepest part. I guess parts. So let's go. So it's just going to create that illusion of like depth. And then we're going to go over the edges of a little bit of red rum red. I like to put this right along the edge of the skin just to give it a little bit more contrast. I usually swirl my brush in there quite a bit to get like a really pigmented red color. So I'm going to start off applying it quite messily and then we're just going to fix it afterwards. All right, and then I'm going to get a cut and tip with a little bit of iso alcohol on it. And I'm just going to run that over get most of it off the skin. And then I also want to put this over the top of the purple in the center. Okay. And then I might just finish it off by getting a little bit more of that first color we put down, Dusty Rose using that to add a little bit more pink to areas that need more pink or to blend other areas back in. I'm going to start by KYing up the center. Just need to lube up this gash real good. This is going to make it look nice and glossy and disgusting and then we won't need to use the blood for that because we've got all those interesting colors happening. We can keep the blood mostly on the outside. Have these interesting colors happening in the center. We can put like a little bit of blood in there, but just. Yeah, cool. So some really nice crusty dried blood around the edge of this reference image. And we're going to do that by applying Fleet Street blank drying blood in dark. Where are you here? This is alcohol based, so it will actually dry down. So we're going to put it on messily, let it fully dry down to get crusty, and then we're going to wipe some of it back. This is the best blood for the first crusty dried up layer in my opinion. Put this anywhere really. Let it start to dry. And then we'll wipe it back. Because although this is going to be wiped back, I don't really make it look too fancy. It really is just to have dried bits of blood around in interesting patterns. So we can put like, if we wanted to, like just little bits in here. Knowing this is gonna be the darker blood of the two. We can put it in some of the darker areas. Okay, it's quite uh, beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah, so artistic. And then I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. And we'll come back with some water. Cool. This is mostly dry now. We're gonna get some water. Try not to have our butt cracks coming up out everywhere. <laughs> and then some paper towels. So uh, water's important because if I were to try and wipe this off, all of it's gonna be dry and not gonna come off, or it's just gonna smear but not actually come off the surface. So you want the water to actually make sure this does come off cleanly. So I'm gonna go in quite heavy handed. If I do take off too much, I can go back in and put more down. So, just trying to see what interesting patterns come through this dried crusty layer. Like in the crustiness on this side, I feel like underneath I might have wiped off too much. So I might just go back in and put some more underneath. But first of all, I want to just get this a little bit cleaner because it's looking a little bit too wiped away and a bit too orange. It might have been me putting too much fake blood down as well and having a lot to wipe away. So. We'll just put like little bits down, keep it kind of thin, and maybe we'll put a little bit more back up here. We'll let that dry. We'll come back to that in a second. I'm gonna get my second blood ready. This is really good. Runny blood for fresh effects. This is Rob Smith Fleet Street Silicon Flow Blood in Arterial. Arterial's got a nice opacity to it. Something I don't think about with blood much. Nice brightness. And it flows very well. You just gotta shake it up first. Because it has an agent in it which helps it to not beat up on silicon. Cool, let's start with that for our dry blood. 
I'm gonna layer on the fresh blood and then again, I need to take stuff off, put stuff back down again. A lot of this blood effect is layering to get beautiful blood patterns, which look organic. Um, so we're gonna start by getting the runny blood coming down off of here. Sort of by getting this kind of everywhere, getting some nice drips. And we're gonna wipe a little bit back, rub it in, make it look messy. So let's get, let's get physical, physical. So I'm gonna just do it dry first and then I'm gonna get some water on there as well. Because usually with these injuries, a lot of it's gonna be smudged around and touched. And you know, when the person's got injured, they're gonna be touching it. When they're at the hospital, it's gonna be getting touched. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm gonna take back some of this blood. So I try to make it look asymmetrical. So some areas heavier than others, some areas lighter than others. So say if I'm like, cool, this part here might be like a nice part to have less blood. And then the other side, we can have more blood. We can get some more of our darker blood on there. We can have that doing some things that are interesting. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Smear that around. All right, let's go back to the fresh blood, Rob Smith's blood. Let's get some more drips going. And I'd like to see a little bit, just a little bit more in here. A little bit more coming down this side. Maybe like some kind of like spattering up here. If we can get the brush and kind of flick stuff around. But I really want here just to be like the emphasis of Everything's kind of coming down. Kind of want to make the top lighter. Kind of want to smear some of this and get a little bit of water. Okay, and then just put that back on top of here. Just put like a little bit back on there. Maybe just like a, a little drip. Uh, you know what I want to do when we're done is get. <clears throat> Rotate that way with your leg a little bit? Yeah. If you have like a. Get some more drips just coming down here. Should we call this one coming of age then? Coming of age, yeah. <laughs> Do a little bit more mm, drips and things. Do, 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 do. How's that looking? Oh, pretty gory. And then I want to just like soften some of these a little bit. I want more of the dried crusty stuff. We'll just um, let it sit and then wipe that back. Give that a minute. So I'm just cleaning up little bits and pieces where I feel like it looks too red, smeared. So it's like definitely bloody, but you got some edges and detail coming through as well. It was like kind of crusty. It's, it's like the nerves are just like... <laughs> it's gone wild. Pumping from my being severed. <laughs> Gross. Like the after death twitch. Nasty. I'm just going to move around. I'm just gonna put some more mattifying stuff just around edges, just to try and help disguise 
or where those are because all the blood and mopping stuff back and forth is going to kind of make that shiny again. Cool, yeah, pretty happy with that. I don't think YouTube's going to like this one. Somehow. I mean... It's educational. Yeah, it's educational. Yes, it looks really good in this light. Yeah. Don't know why, like it's, it's interesting that just slightly different lighting conditions can really change how things are seen. That looks, yeah, pretty good applied on the thigh, actually, I like that a lot. like it a lot. Yeah, and still got pretty good movement. So yeah, you can see that you're moving it around a little bit because it's so soft. And you could also obviously like um, grab it and things. Because <laughs> it is because yeah. it is silicon, you, you can do that. Touch my wound? I mean, touch <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, from the single. Yeah, I think the photos of this are going to be pretty disgusting. Honestly. Hello, is the ambulance there? My friend is bleeding. <laughs> that just looks like some kind of weird kinky bondage fetish, like sexy clean. Bum, chicka, bum, bum, with those nails. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> so weird.